Donald Trump's lawyers have a busy week ahead. In New York, his team is expected to appeal the $355 million ruling in his civil fraud case. And then there are preparations for his criminal trial in Manhattan that's slated to start on March 25th. In Florida, Trump lawyers are planning to file motions to dismiss the classified documents case this week. And in Georgia, the hearing over Prosecutor Fawny Willis's conduct continues. It's a lot, so we got somebody to break it all down. Former federal prosecutor and MSNBC legal analyst Glenn Kirshner joins me now. All right, Glenn, I want you to listen to what Donald Trump said about the civil fraud case this weekend. It's a sham case. There were no victims, no defaults, no damages, no complaints, no nothing. There was nothing. Okay, so, Glenn, I, we play that because a, a potential appeal could hinge on a, you know, no victims defense. So can you explain what this means and, and how it could even work? Sure. If a no victims defense was to win, it would have won in the trial court, but it didn't. Mm. It lost. Here's why. Victims, I think, is perhaps not the right word when you're dealing with this kind of fraud that Donald Trump perpetrated. I think defraud is the right word. Here's why. Donald Trump lied about his assets, overvalued them, overinflated them. Therefore, the banks ended up giving him an unduly and unfairly low interest rate. One, he defrauded the banks out of money. Two, the banks could have used that money to loan, you know, extend loans to other businessmen and women. So it may not be that we think of, you know, victims the way we would think of victims in a violent crime case, but the banks were victims and the people who could have otherwise received loans if Donald Trump had not defrauded the banks out of that money are victims, just not the kind of direct victims we ordinarily think about. But Donald Trump's claim that somehow he has some right, you know, some some winning issue on appeal because he keeps mm. saying there are no victims. That's a bunch of nonsense. OK, so what, what do you make of the way that he just rails against the lawsuits against him like that, especially as we are looking ahead to a criminal trial? Before this, everything that all of the judgments we've seen have been civil trials. It's been about the money. But the, the next couple ones are potentially about his freedom. He sings the song of a loser. He has an unabated string of losses. He has lost civil case after civil case. And I would actually argue, Simone, that he lost a criminal case, albeit by proxy. His organization, his namesake, the Trump organization that he headed up, was criminally convicted of 17 felony counts for a 15-year-long criminal scheme to defraud. No, he wasn't at counsel table, but he lost that case, right? That was his organization that he built, and he ran in a way that was corrupt. And think about it. There are three juries now, two civil and one oh. criminal in the Trump org case, and all of those juries unanimously ruled against Donald Trump or against his organization. That's 30 jurors total that ruled against Donald Trump. That is important foreshadowing for what he's about to experience in his criminal cases. Mm, you did. You wrote a piece that said just that. So um, saying that the civil fraud trial ruling is a predictor of what's to come in his criminal trials and the juries are a key reason for that prediction. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're all looking to the first criminal trial to kick off on March 25th. But I think we should also keep our eye on another date, March 1st. Why? That's the date that the parties are going to gather in a Florida courtroom in the documents obstruction and espionage case that's being presided over by Judge Cannon. That's the day when they're going to resolve some legal issues. And if passed this prologue, Simone, we know Donald Trump and his team of lawyers will try to convince Judge Cannon to kick the May 20th trial date. And you may not expect to hear this from me, but I almost hope that she does kick the May 20th trial date. Why? Because if the Supreme Court denies the stay in the absolute immunity uh, issue and returns the case to Tanya Chutkin in D.C., the election interference case, I would love to see her take that case and drop it on the docket for May 20th if Judge Cannon kicks the May 20th date down in Florida. Mm, OK, I like an interesting theory then, Glenn. OK, so Trump's tried and true tactic is this delay, delay, delay. But how much longer can that really continue throughout all of the cases? Is, is there a line here that he's bumping up against? 
Yeah, um, you know, the, the time on the calendar is growing short. I think it's about eight and a half months until the November 2024 presidential election. He can continue the cases only as long as courts, as judges, allow him to continue the cases. Really, the big open question right now is what will the Supreme Court do with the stay and with the absolute immunity issue? I don't think there's any basis for them to either grant the stay or to take the absolute immunity issue up uh, on appeal. But if they do, boy, they will be doing Donald Trump an enormous favor because that will inevitably delay his D.C. prosecution. Um, I, I think he's going to run out of luck. I think he's going to run out of time. And I think mm. we are, are going to see one and perhaps even two criminal cases tried before the November election.